Hey guys, Meteor World, Chris Tomer here with this Thursday morning mountain weather update. And we do have some snow. This is our clipper, our windy clipper, rolling through Idaho, Wyoming, northern Utah, central and northern mountains of Colorado, southern parts of Montana. Uh, this is Grand Targhee on the west side of the Tetons, and you can see some snow coming down as expected. It's also very windy. Uh, I'm seeing 50 to 70 mile an hour wind gusts uh, through parts of Colorado, so um, it is performing as expected. All right, let me just show you what it looks like on radar. Um, there it is, it's moving very quickly. You can see on the backside, we're getting some of that rotation, a little bit of blue over the top of uh, the Tetons, and of course, wind rivers, but the whole thing's gonna be moving out very quickly, but it is pinching the pressure gradient, and we're seeing quite a bit of wind across pretty much all of uh, Colorado, uh, Wyoming, Idaho, Northern Utah, and Montana. Here's the, uh, the water vapor satellite imagery. And on this, your oranges and reds are your drier air aloft, your moisture is in your whites and your blues. And there is our little clipper right there, racing through Wyoming. So what's next? Well, we've got this storm system and it's looking pretty strong and well organized. And there's one to the north coming out of the Gulf of Alaska. These two storm systems will combine and actually merge and become the next storm system that moves into the Intermount West on October 28, 29, and 30. And then there is one more storm system behind that where we'll rotate in behind it right on its heels. All right, here are my bullet points this morning. So our windy clipper, is happening and that happens mainly this morning and then the low is going to race out this afternoon the second storm comes in 10 28 through 10 30 and then the third one rotates in around halloween and continues into potentially november 1st so there is action on the board all the way through early november let me take you into the time height forecast this is for steamboat in the northern mountains of colorado uh, humidity in the atmosphere next 72 hours roughly um, and so you can see just a, you can see the folding right there with the high wind coming through early this morning uh, with some of the wind flags at 50 knots or more. Um, and there's a little bit of humidity in green. You can read the timeline on the bottom from right to left. This is all through the, the vertical layers of the atmosphere. And then after this morning, the air dries out significantly with the yellows and the oranges taking over through hour 72. Then as we get beyond this time frame, by um, 1028, 29, 30, that's our next storm system. And, and if we were able to see it out that far, we'd, we'd have a lot of green increasing on this map. Humidity would be increasing. In fact, let's take a look at the 15-day uh, the snow forecast from the ensembles. And this is for Steamboat up on Mount Werner. So pretty high up there for the Steamboat area. And you can see the odds of snow all start increasing after 1028. Um, and that's when we start to settle into that pattern with a couple of storm systems and potentially um, the snow accumulation just goes up all the way through early November. So love seeing that. Uh, let me just take a look at the jet stream. Here's what we've got. So by close of business today, um, you can see a lot of jet energy washing across uh, parts of the Inner Mountain uh, with that wind and that clipper today. All right, here we go by tomorrow. Now watch towards uh, 1026, 1027, and 1028. Here comes our trough of low pressure. You can see the dip in the jet. So we're going to uh, see a lot of jet energy and wind cruising through Utah, Wyoming, Colorado during this time frame. Here comes the, uh, the storm system through 1029, and it lingers into 1030. Now, I'll tell you the trend today is to move the low a little bit further to the north, so it doesn't dig quite as far to the south. That'll have some implications in Colorado, making it not as likely or less likely that low spins up, but we'll see. This could always change back. Um, so there's 1031. There's another storm coming in quickly on its heels uh, right there. And then everything sort of slides away um, after 11 2 We'd have to wait for the next storm system. Here is the, uh, the forecast radar and satellite. So this is by 530 this afternoon. Not a lot happening across the lower 40. By this point, that clipper is already raced out of Wyoming. All right, so here we go, 1025, here comes 1026 storm hitting BC, Pacific Northwest. Here comes the southern portion of that. That whole trough moves into the Inner Mountain. Here's the morning of 1029, and we've got snow coming down over parts of Montana, Idaho, Utah, Wyoming, and also Colorado. Um, so there's 1029 afternoon. Um, things starting to expand, a little bit more snow coverage there in the afternoon by 1030. Um, a lot of the action is going to start to pivot down and through Wyoming and Colorado, and there you go, and then it moves away. And then the last piece of that, that's, that third storm comes to the south, 
and then it quickly washes away and then everything starts to feed up into uh, BC. So as far as snow accumulation goes, this will run us all of today through the 2nd of November. So you're looking at a couple of storm systems here uh, with these accumulation numbers. So it doesn't all come at one time, but anywhere in purple is over a foot. Um, we could be looking at over a foot across the Tetons, the Wind Rivers, looking at probably 8 to 10 up around Big Sky, uh, probably 5 to 10 over the Wasatch and the High Uintas. In Colorado, and you can see what I'm talking about, if the storm system tracks a little bit further to the north, that puts more snow into Wyoming and less across the front range high peaks of Colorado. Yesterday, it looked like the numbers would be bigger. Today, I brought them down. But the numbers that have gone up are down in southwest Colorado, interestingly enough. We could be seeing a foot of snow down there. Up in the parts of BC, a couple, maybe even three storms laying down a foot or more of accumulation up there through parts of Whistler, Baker, Rainier, certainly, and all the way down through parts of Oregon and just a lot of the Cascades and the high volcanoes will get hit pretty good. Um, interior BC looking at probably 6 to 12 inches, um, a little bit less as you spill over towards Banff and Sunshine. So this is going to be a good stretch. And unfortunately, I don't have much for California. You're just out of the flow. And like I mentioned yesterday, this is really mirroring, I think, the La Nina light pattern that we're going to see through a lot of the winter. Uh, but nonetheless, this is a great stretch of time. We, we, at least we've got storm systems lined up for late October, early November. And again, we'll, we'll, I'll show you this for, this is, of course, northern Colorado steamboat. Snow accumulation, the, the odds continue to increase all the way through early November. Um, so that, uh, that suggests that the pattern remains active. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this morning mountain weather update. Always appreciate you tuning in here. Take care and have a great Thursday.